Hello YouTubers, Pancake and another video on black powder and the rules within black powder and this video we're going to be taking a look at artillery and how you know, the basic artillery works in black powder so here we have a British gun it's a nine pound gun so it can, it can fire over three ranges as any gun in black powder obviously uh, cannons and the like it has a short range of up to six and then it has a medium range, up to half the range of the gun, and then it has a long range, which is over half of the range. Uh, distances in the black powder are quite substantial, obviously because they're the large large boards and tables that um, it's created for. But obviously, the smaller your table, you just alter your sizes. Otherwise, you kind of get you know, artillery pieces or batteries like kind of dominating the uh, field. Um, give you an example uh, in the book. Maximum range tables, smoothbore battalion guns 24 inch, also artillery 36, smoothbore foot artillery 48, smoothbore siege artillery 60, rifled horse artillery 48, rifled foot artillery 60, and rifled siege artillery 72 inch. So it's a quite a distance uh, across uh, the table that they'll be firing at. Uh, this it does affect uh, the amount of dice you have in range. Right, because you get up to six inch, which is that, you get three dice. Plus also if you're being charged, you get closing fire as well. So you get a modifier to the dice. So you're hitting on on a better dice roll. You'd be hitting on threes and not fours. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of dice at uh, short range. Then up to medium range, up to half, you get two dice. And then at long range, you get one dice. But being hit by artillery causes modifiers to your morale, to your save. So basically if you hit by artillery fire at long range, it's minus one to morale. If you hit by artillery fire at close range or medium range, it's a minus two. So they're very nasty. Alright, they don't fire many dice, but they can start to mount casualties up. And if you can imagine if you've got a battery of two guns, or maybe three, and you've, been, and you've got a battalion like that caught out in the open, it can uh, cause some damage. So uh, also... Uh, as it's uh, on the flat field, it's got no trajectory really. So, that's for sake of the say for the game purposes, they was in front. It couldn't fire over the top because it's a standard artillery piece. Now, if they was there like this, and the artillery piece was on an elevated position, it could fire. But there still has to be. A gap between your infantry and enemy infantry so what we're saying is in in this situation the gun can fire over the heads because it's on an elevated position but it still has to be a six inch gap between enemy unit and friendly unit friendly unit and gun so we're here we'd have a seven inch so it's capable of firing and here we'd have an eight inch so that gun could fire over the heads of these 95th rifles to target this French line infantry battalion. The gun does give modifiers to uh, shooting at uh, attack columns, uh, march columns. Uh, artillery shooting a unit in attack column, march column, or infantry square gains a plus one to hit modifier. Artillery at long range or over maximum range obviously is the minus one. And if you're shooting over units, as we've just described, it's also a minus one. Guns and artillery pieces as targets themselves. So if you're shooting basically at an artillery piece, you shoot at the nearest point of the unit in whatever position the gun model is nearest. Crews, horses and limbers are basically ignored in this case. The reason for this is that artillery pieces become disproportionately huge compared to foot, cavalry and regiments, obviously for the bases that are represented on. So obviously it you'd measure to the front of the gun because you could have limbers and horses around so you target the gun also the gun shoots at a 45 degree so basically do it this way 45 degree angle so whatever it can see in its front 45 degrees that is, is basically what it can shoot at and what it can see now in this situation the gun wants to fire on the French battalion line battalion in the distance 
it has some it's, it's friendly units here on the left hand side and a tree on the right now it can still take a shot at the French line battalion but it has to have a corridor or a gap of six inch or more through which it can fire so we check the distance and basically that's seven inch so the gun will be permitted to fire through this gap if it was like that, the 95th was closer to the tree and the gap was only 4 inch, the gun wouldn't be permitted to fire because it would be firing too close to its own troops and the, the, the gap isn't wide enough for the crew to aim the cannonball through. Also there's an extra rule in Albion Triumph that you can get, you can get grazing fire from the cannon. So basically what that means is, say this gun has a, a range of 30 inch and we measure to the battalion and it's 15 inch so you roll your dice to hit the cannonball hits at 15 inch the battalion so you roll your dice and if it's a hit because this can be done at medium or long range so it would be at medium range it hits but because it's got a range of 30 it bounces chest height another 15 inch up to long range so any units behind get caught in grazing fire and a hit obviously there's obstacles behind like walls and stuff then obviously the cannonball stops and doesn't continue any further so basically you could do damage to continual infantry behind which is uh, you know, quite cool so it can be quite deadly I like I say they only shoot with one two or three dice but you have a battery of them then they become quite dangerous in the game of black powder uh, that's a little hindsight into uh, artillery and black powder. Hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one. Bye.